Good afternoon. Thank you, uh, PCSF, for this opportunity. I think my topic uh, probably is going to overlap a little bit at, uh, on what Ashutosh said. And uh, I might be stepping into the future uh, speakers arena as well a little bit. Now we know that TG is a fairly common complex uh, cyanotic heart disease, almost 5 to 10% of that. And uh, TGA VSD with left ventricular flow tract obstruction forms probably less than a fourth of that uh, TGA spectrum. Uh, important embryological development, we know that it's persistence of uh, subaortic conus and supplementary conus disappears. Now to understand what to see preoperatively and how to choose, probably we should know a little bit about uh, the pathoanatomy as well as uh, the options that are available to us and their outcomes. Now, pathoanatomy, we know that there is ventricular arterial discordance. It generally advertised anterior PAS posterior, there could be a little bit of obliquity very rarely. VSDs commonly are conoventricular or permembranous type, uh, malaline varieties, muscular, very rarely doubly committed or avicinal kind of uh, VSDs are also known. LVOTO again can be simple to complex. It could be simple uh, pulmonary valvar uh, hypoplasia to thickened leaflets, uh, subvalvar uh, stenosis, specifically the conal septum uh, turning backwards is the commonest cause. Uh, also other things like fibromuscular bands or tissues, all these can cause subvalvar stenosis. It could be combined as well. In coronary anomalies, we know that they are fairly common in transpositions. Now, surgical options to available to us are all this. Uh, in a smaller kit, probably VT shunt and ductal stenting still have a role. Atrial switch, LVO, TVO, uh, probably is uh, not done that frequently nowadays. Arterial switch with left ventricular outflow tract uh, resection or release is uh, still a uh, choice. The long standing Rastelli and Rev, probably uh, most popular even today, and the last over two decades, root transfers are picking up very well. And, and still, in some small subset, we still have a role for single ventricle pathway. Briefly, Rastelli, we know that there is going to be a long intraventricular tunnel. Nothing is done to the conus, and uh, there is going to be an RV to be a conduit. Several modifications have come in this also to improve the long term outcomes. Rev to eliminate RV to PA conduit, uh, conduitless kind of repair was proposed along with accession of the uh, conus, sub uh, aortic conus, thinking that that would probably solve the LVOT as well as RVOT problems. Nikhaido, we know that posterior translocation of the aortic root along with intake coronaries is what was done beginning. Now we have modifications to that, uh, adding the comps and uh, as I said, pivoted transfer on the LCA, then re-implanting the right coronary. Half turn truncal switch, again, as an advantage of uh, harvesting the both in block and turning them by 180 degree, re-implant the coronaries, uh, is a good option to tackle both LV as well as uh, RV oriented uh, issues. It, it, it also gives good alignment of the LV and also to the RV. And these valves probably one need not have to put a conduit, you can do can't use like patch or uh, valve, uh, valve patch techniques so that both can be taken care in the long run. Double root translocation is uh, more or less same like uh, after and truncus with uh, separating both the aorta and uh, pulmonary artery, harvesting them separately, more or less it's all the same. There are several kind of these kind of procedures which are there including the posterior uh, I mean, uh, Pulmonary translocation, which somebody is going to talk about, probably addresses only the uh, RVOT. Now, Rastoli or Rev, we know that very popular surgery, uh, simpler of all, I think, for, for TGVSTPS, apart from probably an arterial switch and a simple LVOT resection. But there are several contraindications for this, or relative contraindications like a non rootable VST, very small VSTs. Uh, AV valve issue, significant straddling, even though there are people who are doing with uh, various modifications like conal flap and other things. Significant RV hypoplasia, anything less than minus one Z value, probably it becomes uh, dangerous to put a tunnel uh, inside the RV. Engage again is uh, substantial risk for a large intraventricular tunnel. 
On the other hand, root translocations have many advantages. They're much more anatomical. We know that uh, LV gets much easily oriented to the aorta or the vice versa. So also the RVOT. So all kinds of VSTs, it's possible to root them. AV valve problems can is not a major issue in this because we, we can always work around the infant velar septum. Mild RVI hypoplasia again is not a major issue or even one can look into the concept of one and a half ventricle where you can combine a root transfer with a BCPS. And uh, it is doable in younger children because you're not looking into a large intraventricular tunnel or other things. Smaller limitations like uh, some of the complex coronary anatomies, uh, severe pulmonary valve hypoplasia, then, then doing such a major complex procedure probably has uh, no major advantage because you're not going to align the LVOT to the uh, aorta. And late, it was already said, aortic regurgitation in some of these patients is a concern, I think. In this pattern, when we look at it, probably uh, B, C, and E type of Jacobs coronary patterns may pose a uh, significant risk for a root translocation. Now, outcomes, when you look at it, Rastelli still has a problem. It's been a problem. This, this seminal paper from the Boston proved that interventions on both the ventricular, I mean, both the outflows are quite significant over a period of time. So by, by probably 15, 20 years of life, uh, even, I mean, uh, re-intervention free survival is only 20 to 25%. And uh, younger the patient, sooner the LVOT uh, uh, issues. That is what been seen in this study. Now, Nikhaido from their own group have posted very good results. At least there is no LVOT or no significant uh, aortic incompetence, no significant aortic valve incompetence. But however, RVOT remains a challenge. And this paper from Boston again proved more or less the same thing. LVOT at least is far better with root transfers. Half turn trunkle switch, again, the late results uh, from the same group who devised this is pretty much good. There is no LVOT, RVOT because they're only using uh, patches or valved patches, not a conduit. So uh, they, 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 they talk about uh, some amount of MR in those patients. Most probably uh, it could be technical uh, because whenever we relocate, reestablish aorta mitral continuity, if you gather too many bites, probably it's possible that you can crowd the uh, mitral valve apparatus. Again, as Rastali, Rev Nikhaido, I think there has been geographical preferences. If you look at uh, the European congenital heart surgeons study, it's Rastali still the number one, followed by Rev or its metras modification where we use piece of aorta to augment the pulmonary, uh, main pulmonary artery. Not much of uh, Nikhaido is there. When, when we look at the STS data, I think they seem to prefer Rastali followed by Nikhaido. Uh, and Rev probably are not done in that big number. The uh, only thing in that group they pointed out is that uh, since Nikhaido or any root transfer is a highly complex operation with long-term cross-clamp and CPB, need for uh, a post-operative circulatory support uh, is probably high in Nikhaido. Now with this background, when we see, what do we need to see? Yes, we need to see the root relationship. As it's already said, the the Ratio between the pulmonary valve and the aortic makes a lot of sense when we're considering the root transfers. VSD locations and sizes are important. Right ventricular size volume probably is important. AV valve uh, or subvalvular apparatus where they're getting inserted or they're coming in the way of uh, VSD closure or tunneling is a very important. And mechanism by LVOT. There are uh, case, uh, I mean, a complexity based scoring system by the Canadian group. I do not know how many people use that, but gives a rough idea about what should we look for in the LVOT, whether it's simple or complex. Coronary anatomy is obviously essential. I think most of these things we can get by a very good echocardiography today. I think still most of the people go with a good echocardio alone, but wherever we have problem, we can supplement with a CT scan. Clinical factors, age and presence, absence of cyanosis would probably uh, influence our decision. Uh, these, I think all of us know, Echo is 
really good to define most of the aspects what we spoke about. CT again, probably is again another good thing, especially to see your uh, pulmonary arteries, branch pulmonary arteries, especially these kids have already previous uh, vitiation or something like that. Coronary anatomy can be better seen. You can reconstruct 3D CT and even uh, 3D printing if that is going to help us in some complex patients. Now with that decision-making, in my opinion, if, if a neonate or a young child comes to us, if there is significant cyanosis in that age group, best thing is to do a, a, a either BT shunt or a PDS stent. Anything beyond that, if child is not very cyanotic, one can wait and all the other rest of the options should come into picture. If LVOT is very simple, you can do a little bit of resection and get away. Switch and LVOT resection is still a good option. Uh, it's a simple option. Uh, even though there are concerns uh, of aortic uh, incompetence in this subset as well. The rest of all kids can again go with the same pathway as uh, uh, Nikhidos, root transfers and others. Now, based on the RV, a small RV out of, uh, I mean, uh, Rastoli or Rev will probably go out of question and become more riskier. Again, non-rootable VSTs are not the best thing to uh, go with uh, either of Rastoli or Rev. AV well abnormality, even though it's not an absolute contraindication, one should be very, very careful in assessing it and choosing the patient for uh, a rev or rastly. So there probably root transfer could be a better option. And if mitral valve straddling is very significant, a single ventricle can still be a good option uh, rather than trying something heroically and losing the patient. Now, based on the coronary anatomy, as we said, uh, those patients where you think the anatomy is very unfavorable, like anteriorly going coronary or coronary going in between the great arteries, probably will put the child as higher risk and we have to consider uh, rastoli or rev. A pulmonary analysis to aortic analysis ratio has been shown already. A very small ratio, probably there's no advantage of these big uh, root transfer operations. Maybe we can get away with rastoli or rev. But if that is significantly larger, like more than 0.5 or 0.6 or closer to one, you certainly have the advantage of both the routes. Uh, between Nikaido and uh, Trunkle Switch, I think the same thing works. If the native pulmonary analysis, large, I mean, analysts and leaflets are reasonable, then I think Trunkle Switch still is a better option. So to conclude, I would say that uh, there is no ideal solution even now with all these things available to us, everything has their own bits. And we do not have enough data because all these are very small case series where you cannot apply even statistics on them. Root transfer techniques at the moment looks like probably they are going to have a better outcome compared to traditional uh, rastoli or rev. Rastoli with or rev with modifications, maybe we can produce results which are better than what was published in 2000. But preoperative assessment is the key, uh, either echo or CT, whichever is helpful to us. Thank you.